We eagerly await the 8-track version. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Send me a kiss by water! Baby, my heart's on fire! We continue our epic journey into War for Cybertron Siege with Voyager Soundwave, one of the staple members of the Decepticon roster. Soundwave's iconic look and soothing voice has long filled Transformers fans with both unease and joy. Originally, he transformed into a cassette tape player, which may have been cool in the 80s, but has since made him the butt of many a joke due to the subsequent obsolescence of tape players. Similarly with Megatron, Hasbro seems unable now to settle on an alt mode for poor Soundwave. He has been radios, MP3 players, drone aircraft, minivans, and other things various and sundry. For the siege line, they seem to have made him some sort of blocky spaceship, and we will see in this review if it's any good. The box is solid and edgy, showing off the figure with art on the side panels, and on the back we see the robot and alt modes, and if this picture is any indication, I'm starting to wonder about this alt mode already. The Battlemaster diagrams are off to the side, and they peek at the upcoming cassette figures which will be sold and reviewed separately. I have been informed that many of these Siege Line boxes contain secret messages revealed when you hit the box with black light. In this case, in addition to Cybertronian writing that I am too lazy to translate, there is also a peek at a third mode for Soundwave, namely the infamous Lamp Post mode, which is a tribute to one short scene in the very first cartoon episode of Transformers, wherein Soundwave was on Cybertron, and didn't have his cassette player mode yet, no doubt it was a mere throwaway scene, and the animators never expected that anybody would actually try to engineer a figure based on it. They were wrong. Anywho, let us unbox Soundwave and review him properly. <laughs> Out of box Voyager Siege Soundwave comes with his instruction booklet. Two matching gun accessories, one with extendo action and a grey gun accessory with extendo folding action. According to the instruction manual, the first weapon is Soundwave's high cap concussion blaster with 18 muscles, 15 targeting scopes, and 12 mouse pointers. Next up is the LRHD sonic cannon with 17 muscles. 12 targeting scopes and 19 mouse pointers, whatever that means. Finally, there is the EMXT Blitz Charge Blaster, with 11 muscles, 19 targeting scopes, and 15 mouse pointers. These three weapons actually combine together, if by combine you mean peg together, to form a kind of whirly gig ninchucky thing. Hop, hop, hop. And this is Soundwave in his alt mode. Calling this a spaceship is a bit, uh, generous. It's ungainly no matter what angle you choose to look at it from. And you can see the robot -y bits pretty easily through the kibble. Only these nacelles at the top and this dinky cockpit give the impression that it's a vehicle of some kind. And unfortunately, in this mode, most of the Battlemaster ports are covered up, except for the ones designed as weapon storage for the figure's accessories. True, you can swap them out to mix and match, but it still has less to offer than other Voyagers in this line. Leader Shockwave's wing dings make a nice addition, and add a few more ports if you feel the need. As you can see, these nacelle thingies have a tendency to flop a little bit, a little nail polish will probably cinch them up nicely, but in the meantime, just be careful with them. The colors, at least, are well done, with Soundwave's deep purple blue and some nice silver to set it all off. The grungy applications give some personality to it and enhance the highly detailed sculpting. One neat feature is that the pop-open chest is now at the back, and it can still be opened and used to store the cassette Battle Masters whenever those turn up. But unless you're a fan of boxy-looking spaceships, you may not find much to recommend the alt mode. 
If only you could deck it out with more battle masters. Unless you count these holes at the back, which are only really good for putting in extra fire blast accessories. To transform, first remove and set aside the accessories, turn the ship upside down, and prise apart the arm sections, which were the landing gear. Flip these sections slightly outwards a little bit to give clearance for all the other stuff you're going to have to do. This entire top section pops loose. Untab it from the body. You will see this hinge section underneath it. Fold and accordion it backwards, and then relock it back into place. It should tab in securely. Take these silver sections that were the top of the ship and fold them backwards a bit. The ship nacelles will untab from the top of Soundwave, fold out this section, and tab it upwards. This will give you enough clearance to fold the robot head out from inside Soundwave's body. Take this little thingamabob at the side of his shoulder and fold it inwards so that these tab holes are now facing out. You may then re-tab the arm sections back into the side of the body. Then fold the arms down, and rotate them so that the elbows bend forwards. Rotate these sections at the base of the forearm so that they are pointing backwards. Then rotate the robot hands from inside the forearms. The engine cells sort of tilt inwards and fold in, and peg into these little tabs. Fold this little hatch back upwards, but take this accordion hinge and fold it in and downwards until these nacelles clamp to the robot back. Rotate the legs so that these silver sections are pointing outwards. The backs of the legs have these little hatches that open up. Inside the shins you'll see that the robot feet have been cleverly hidden. Fold those down. Take these sections and fold them inside these flaps, and then re-clamp them shut. These flaps should now peg into these tabs at the side. As a robot, this sound wave does an excellent job of looking like his old Generation 1 counterpart, only with even more detail. The darker blue seems to suit him, and I for one don't really mind the grunginess they added to the paint. He's got plenty of sculpted detailing to add dimension and depth, and it's fairly well set off by the blue plastic with silver highlights. The grey parts look a little blasé by comparison. The forearms are hollow, which is a disappointment. Many of the other Siege figures did a good job of filling those empty spaces, but he at least feels solid, and his limbs don't seem to flop around easily. The button on his shoulder will still pop open his chest, and let you slip in any of the cassette micromasters. They even sculpted this hand with one finger curled out cheekily, so that you may pose Soundway with his finger pushing that button to unleash his cassette minions. Speaking of which, Seed Soundwave has plenty of ports for plugging in Micromasters, Battlemasters, and Fire Blast accessories, so you can arm him up with as many as you can contrive, and even have him clonk around wearing Shockwave's armor. In addition to all the other little gimmicks, Soundwave has these little flip-up antenna that were the landing gear for his ship, but which can serve as communication aerials. And of course, you can rotate the landing skids forwards to act as additional gun pistols for his arms. Voyager Soundwave comes packed with excellent articulation. The head will rotate 360 degrees and waggle a little bit on its ball socket. The arms will rotate 360 degrees and splay outward fairly well. You can also untab them from the sides if you want some more shoulder square in action. Upper bicep swivel is included and the elbows will bend a surprising 180 degrees. There is a double joint tucked in there, so it's fairly robust. The hands will fold in and out. Despite the kibble on the back, there is a full 360 degree waist rotation. And they installed these little flip-up flaps on his codpiece, so that he can kick forwards and backwards without any trouble. There is a hinge and ball socket combination at the hips, which allows for full splaying and rotation. Upper thigh swivel is included, and the knee will bend 90 degrees. As with many of these siege figures, there is no real forward tilt on the ankles, but they will tilt in and outwards so that you can do wide angle standing. 
so you can get strong range of motion out of your sound wave and put him into many of his classic G1 poses and tucked away into this siege sound wave is a third mode making him a triple changer as was revealed by the black light and tucked away inside one of the box flaps is a diagram showing his lamp post mode you basically leave the robot legs as is untab and unfold the section from the back as if you were transforming him into a ship hide his head back inside his body then reclose this flap and use this hinge to tuck these forward and tab them in here you'll see this tab and groove they plug together and clamp into place fold the hands back into the forearms Looking at the figure from behind, you will see that these sections have some very small tabs sticking out of the back. Take the arm, rotate it backwards, make sure that the elbow is folding inwards. You will see this very tiny groove inside the forearm, that is pegged together, and hold it in place. Make sure that the secondary elbow hinge is the one that bends, otherwise it will not tab in. Fold up these sections at the back to form communication antenna. Then basically you just make Soundwave bend forwards a little bit. And here's a lamp post. Ugh. You can fold up the antenna from the shoulders as well, and also plug in the gun accessories to enhance the appearance of a communication lamp post. But there's no denying that Soundwave is going to look a little bit silly trying to infiltrate an Autobot base with this big huge Decepticon badge on the front of the lamp. Ironhide, that lamp post has been following me around. The darn thing's got legs. It isn't actually emitting any light, but it's humming an awful lot. And it has the enemy's logo plastered all over it. I think it may be a spy. Come on, Prime. That's ridiculous. Well, alright. Let's start going over our top secret plans. You know, the ones that are so top secret that if Megatron ever learned about them, we'd probably wind up crash landing on an alien planet and sitting there in stasis for millions of years. What Optimus? How oddly specific. Ha 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 ha. For size comparison, here is War for Cybertron's Voyager Siege Soundwave next to Titan's Return Leader Class Soundwave. Here is Voyager Siege Soundwave next to Titan's Return Deluxe Full Tilt. Here is Voyager Siege Soundwave next to Transformers Animated Activator Soundwave. And here is Voyager Siege Soundwave next to a Funko Pop Space Invader. <laughs> Voyager Siege Soundwave will not disappoint people who are fans of the character, though they may snort disdainfully at the non-tape player alt mode. The figure boasts strong detailing and colors with an intricate paint job. There are no annoying robot lips. The weapon combination is fairly clever. The robot mode is versatile with Battle Master compatibility and excellent articulation. He scales well with the other Voyagers. Pop in a MicroMaster cassette, and he's all one could ask for. Negatives are that the alt mode isn't nearly as cool. The ship seems a bit simple despite all the transformation steps. The hollow forearms and lack of a forward ankle tilt are marks against him. And while it's nice they threw in a lamp post mode, they did not put in any formal directions to know if you've done it right. There is even a fan-based cassette tape player mode which basically involves turning him inside out. I will leave that to the internet to supply the directions. I give War for Cybertron Voyager Siege Soundwave 8 out of 10 deaths. After all, he's a hit with the chicks. Laser beak want a cracker? I kill you! If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell him all, and tell him I'm your own. <laughs>